Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 8th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Quick follow up on the Red Cross donation scam that I talked about uh, yesterday and uh, wrote up on Friday. Well, the original scam asked for a donation via Bitcoin, but it actually offered an email address to send an email to if you needed help with that. So I did that and turns out they're also willing to scam you via PayPal. I did report the affected pay address to PayPal, so hopefully that'll get uh, shut down pretty quickly. The Bitcoin scam wasn't really successful, still only seeing about uh, $10 or so, a single transaction being received by the Bitcoin address. I hope that this was just a test. And then we have an interesting vulnerability in the Linux kernel that allows for privilege escalation. The developer of that found the vulnerability, Max Kellerman, did call it dirty pipes based on its use of pipes. Now in Unix, you often transfer data between processes via pipes and there's a special mode here how these pipes can be used called splice. Now, if you splice pipes, what this means is instead of copying the data from one buffer to another, from one process to the other process, several processes share the same piece of memory. That can then, under certain circumstances, lead to confusion where data intended for one process ends up at a different process with different privileges. Max Kellerman did develop a proof of concept exploit and published today a blog post with details about the vulnerability. The proof of concept exploit does allow overriding part of the Etsy password uh, file. So it is now able to, for example, add additional root users to the file. And interestingly, this vulnerability also works against read-only file systems, like for example, mounted ISO files. Patches were submitted to the Linux kernel on February 12th, so about a month ago, and should already be incorporated in major distribution. So make sure your kernels are up to date since this vulnerability appears to be relatively easy to exploit. And talking about vulnerabilities and patches, uh, we do have a critical update for Mozilla Firefox and Thunderbird. Uh, both uh, programs are affected by a use after free in the XSLT parameter processing, which is already been exploited in the wild. So this is something that you definitely should patch quickly. And we got uh, details regarding a flaw that Microsoft recently patched in the Azure automation service. The nature of the vulnerability was that an attacker would be able to interact with an internal system at Microsoft, which would then leak other customers' authentication tokens. The automation service, well, as the name implies, allows you to automate certain tasks in order to run these tasks of course you need credentials that's where these authentication tokens come in and by leaking this these authentication tokens it was possible to essentially create tasks to run tasks against uh, different customers infrastructures if you are using Microsoft Azure and the automation service, then definitely take a look at Yanir Tsarimi's uh, blog, which uh, does outline all the details, including uh, some steps that you can take to figure out if you may have been vulnerable, if you may have been affected, and how to better protect your accounts. Well, another day, so we also have another vulnerability in network accessible storage. This time it's TerraMaster's turn for an unauthenticated remote command execution via PHP object instantiation. The vulnerability was found by researchers at Octagon Network and plenty of details were published to really make this patch urgent or maybe we'll soon see a variant of the deadbolt ransomware for these TerraMaster storage devices. And yes, patches have been made available. 
Well, that's it for today. And by the way, sorry if some of you in particular are listening to Apple Podcast are not able to sort of get an updated version of this podcast the last week or so. I'm debugging and I'm trying to find what the problem is. So far, no real luck. The feed seems to be up to date and syntactically correct. It's just not updating with Apple. I also pushed a different URL for the feed without success. You may want to try to just unsubscribe and resubscribe. Let me know if this helps, but so far the response sounds more like it's not helping, sadly. Well, uh, I'll continue to work on this, and thanks for listening. For those of you who can listen, and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.